Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack a Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Here's worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hey there, welcome to ATL and 29, a Peachtree Hoops podcast where we look at the NBA from the starting point of Atlanta. My name is Kevin Chenard. I'm coming to you after the Hawks' 118-98 loss to the Portland Trailblazers. Not the finest moment for the Hawks. Uh, pretty much start to finish, the Trailblazers were just a better team out there. It was fun watching Trey Young have uh, a nice scoring outburst in the first quarter, but you know, by and large, beyond that, the, plays, the Blazers, even without Nurkic and McCollum, were just played better basketball than the Hawks did. Uh, go to the three stars. Normally we go three to one. Let's go one to three. Right off the bat here, let's just say Damian Lillard was the number one star. I mean, that guy is a rock. 36 points, made 13 of 25 shots. The Hawks just didn't have an answer for him. Uh, we'll talk more about the lineups in a minute. I thought it was interesting that Pretty much all game long, he was being guarded by Trey Young and Jalen Adams. Uh, I, I get the value. you got two rookies. It's a learning experience for them to guard a guy like Lillard. But, you know, if this were maybe game seven of a playoff series, I think maybe you would see something a little bit different in terms of, you know, maybe putting a Bazemore or a Bembry on Lillard and then hoping to stash your point guard somewhere else. But, uh, you know, the Hawks went with the learning experience approach tonight and, and Trey Young and Jalen Adams, uh, you know, both guarded Lillard most of the time what they were doing in terms of uh, defensive coverage was an over scheme. So, you know, it, it was a matter of they would chase Lillard behind the screen, you know, essentially taking away his three point shot, but giving him ample driving lanes and and Lillard took advantage from start to finish so a uh, terrific game from Damian Lillard excited to see what he can do in this year's playoffs uh, hopefully it's something interesting from him for the second star let's go with Trey Young you know we mentioned you know what he was doing defensively in terms of scheme uh, he had 18 points in the first quarter uh, and and while he was scoring 18 points in the first quarter, Damian Lillard was also scoring 18 points. Uh, so you can kind of win some and you lose some there. But Lillard was terrific. Trey Young was terrific offensively in the first quarter. Uh, here's what he said in terms of what he saw uh, from pick and roll coverage over the course of the night from the Trailblazers. They're good at switching switching defenses uh, early on. Uh, they're one one type of way, and then uh, later in, in the, the first half, they started uh, blitzing all my pick and rolls and trapping. Uh, and even in the second half, they started doing that too. So uh, they're good at switching things. So switching some pick and rolls early and then later blitzing. Saw a couple uncharacteristic errors from Trey Young. Usually he's a a phenom when it comes to dealing with those traps but you know on one he just kind of tried to force a play and Portland got a, a breakaway layup off the miscue um, but for the night Trey Young 26 points seven assists made 10 of 25 shots one of eight from three three turnovers all in all it would have been a pretty terrific game from Trey Young he just didn't have his three-point shot going and, you know, really there, there was less offensive help on the floor tonight from the Hawks than there usually is. And we'll get to that in a minute. Some milestones for Trey. He became the second player in NBA history with 1,400 points and 600 assists as a rookie. 
Uh, the only other player to do that was Oscar Robinson back in 1961. He also stepped up two spots on the Hawks' all-time rookie scoring list, passing Dominique Wilkins for third and then John Drew for second. Uh, he doesn't have enough games left to catch Pete Maravich, but he'll finish second all-time on the Hawks' rookie scoring list. For the third star, let's go with John Collins. 20 points, two rebounds, three assists, two blocks. Uh, again, you know, he continues to make a better attempt to challenge shots at the rim than he did earlier in the season. An uncharacteristic two rebounds. He didn't have any rebounds uh, until the fourth quarter. Kind of like Trey Young. He was great offensively in the first quarter. If you look at over the course of the game, you know, there was a little bit more of a struggle. And like Trey Young, I think he suffered a little bit from the amount of offensive firepower on the floor with him at times. So without without Prince and Len, uh, Torian Prince and Alex Len, who didn't play in this game, it's just a little bit less offense than the Hawks usually have out there, less floor spacing. Here's what Collins said after the game. Honestly, I don't really know if it was um, them defensively. Uh, as much as more of it was us, uh, us defensively. Um, so, like, you know, Dame got off to a quick start and it kind of ignited them all night. How tough a guy is it to go against the I mean, you obviously saw tonight that he was uh, uh, almost unguardable when he gets a shot going, man. I think we should have did a better job of trying to you know, do something else, but when a guy gets hot like that, uh, it's tough to guard. What do you hope to accomplish on, on obviously going up against another 50 win team in back to back games because you got uh, Milwaukee in the following on this game against Portland? Well, uh, you know, we like playing better teams, I'm guessing, by showing our record against them. So um, hopefully we come out with the same amount of energy and uh, can compete with them. We know we can compete with any team in the league. Uh, it's all about our starts. You know, it's a nice start and uh, trying to continue that energy throughout the whole game. John, thanks. Uh, Trey Young had that 18 point first quarter. I mean, what did you see from him having that success early on and then kind of translate to the rest of the game? Yeah, he was cooking. Um, you can see it just coming out. The dude was cooking, um, doing his thing. You know, nobody's really going to stop him when the guy gets hot like that. You know, I feel like, uh, you know, it's tough to sustain sustain that level of play throughout four quarters, but I feel like he did a solid job throughout the game of, you know, getting his and, um, you know, just trying to settle the game down later. The team was out rebounded tonight. Um, you statistically did not have one until the fourth quarter, which everyone was pretty much surprised. Uh, is there anything that you saw Portland do as far as boxing you out or being out of position or anything? Not really. Um, I feel like whenever we play Portland, I feel like it's tough. You know, I'm out there guard on the perimeter a lot. You know, those guys have a lot of perimeter oriented guys. Um, I think that cost me to, you know, miss out on a couple boards, um, as well as Damian Lillard hitting, you know, all his shots and basically <laughs> the first two quarters. Um, that kind of takes away a couple of rebounds too. So, I um, mean, you have nights like this. Obviously, I, I, I hate to have a night like this with one or two rebounds, which is you know almost unacceptable. But gotta take the take the lumps as they come and uh, keep going. Some other stuff from this game, as we mentioned before, no Torian Prince, no Alex Len. Torian Prince was ruled out; was on the injury list. Lloyd Pierce said before the game that. Really, it shouldn't be any kind of extended issue, and he expects him to play. Expects Tory and Prince to play Sunday, and Alex Len was, you know, not on the injury list. Just didn't play. They went with Deontay Davis instead. Obviously, they probably want to get a look at Deontay Davis. Also, Pierce said that Alex Len, you know, had some nagging things. Uh, I'm not even sure if he used the word injuries, but you know, just. The kind of minor stuff when you're not in a playoff chase and it's not a crucial game. You know, it's probably just better to rest Alex Lynn and get him healed up rather than having him try to play through something that's an irritation. So no Alex Lynn, no Torian Prince, nothing expected really to be any kind of long-term issue. And again, Lynn wasn't even on the injury report. So it was probably more just a matter of wanting to see Deontay Davis. Davis looked fine. Nothing to get too excited about, I suppose. Uh, I would guess that it's a little bit hard for him to fit into the offense. I appreciated that he set some some nice screens. He had one that freed Vince Carter for a three that I thought was a terrific screen, one of the best screens maybe the Hawks have set all season. But at the same time, as Pierce noted, there's no practice time, really. They're not practicing much at this point in the season, so it's hard for him to get involved in the offense when he doesn't get that practice time. And he also can't shoot or you know doesn't look like he has 
extended shooting range anywhere near what Alex Lynn and Dwayne Debman have. So again, it's a dicey fit with the offense. You put him out there with DeAndre Bembry, Kent Bazemore, Jalen Adams, and you, you get a lineup even with Vince Carter doing what he can do from three. That's just not a dynamic offensive lineup there. Uh, and I thought that some of those lineups were, were pretty tough to watch offensively, even if maybe they did a couple of things here and there defensively. Uh, speaking of Bazemore, kind of a rough night for him offensively. He seemed like he was getting to the rim. You know, he was getting to kind of the, the left-handed layups and uh, floaters, but right at the rim. Um, and, and he was just trying to bank those shots, kind of long layups. And it seemed like all night long, those shots that he was trying to take, those left-handed bank layups, they were just short. They were coming off the glass, too close to him, off the front of the rim. And uh, Bazemore ended up one of seven on the night. A couple of good things from DeAndre Bembry. As I mentioned before, most of the night Lillard was being guarded by Trey Young or Jalen Adams, but in the short stint that DeAndre Bembry did it, you know, same kind of defensive coverage. He was playing over the pick and roll, so which again, you know, gave Damian Lillard a chance to be a star driving to the basket. But what I like about Bembry's stint in those situations is that he was helping the helper. You know, when Lillard was coming down the lane and the defense had to help to try to do something to keep Lillard from scoring at the rim, uh, Bembry was making some nice plays, helping the helpers, getting back out to the corner. And, you know, he picked a couple of passes just by the incredible way that he moves on the floor. It's just a joy to watch Bembry just move on a basketball court. He's just so quick and moves with such a flowing style that he just takes one, two, three steps where he wants to go and he gets there so quickly. And so... You know, in those situations, he's playing over the pick and roll. He'd get behind Lillard, but then when somebody would step up to stop Lillard and then make the pass, you know, he was jumping out to the right places to make a couple of steals. He also had a couple nice dunks, uh, one just driving the lane and going up in traffic, and another one on a set play coming out of a out of a timeout when the Hawks got the possession on their side of the ball. Uh, just that curling screen uh, off a of back screen with him going towards the rim and cleared it wide open for him to get a nice alley-oop. So, so some good stuff from Bembry in those respects. But again, just, you know, Bazemore, Bembry, Deontay Davis, and Jalen Adams, uh, when you put those four together in a lineup, it's going to be tough to score against good NBA defenses, I think. Like Trey Young, Kevin Herter didn't have the three-point game going tonight, made one of six threes, uh, so not great in that particular department. But he had four assists which is something you want to see against a defense like Portland, especially when they're switching and you want to get that secondary creation. Another thing that Herter did in this game that he's done pretty well over the last few weeks, it's just nice to see his little turnaround game in the lane. Sometimes he'll drive and he'll make a very patient drive. He doesn't rush a shot when he gets there. You know, He'll just take a defender, kind of get him on his back, and then using his, he would use his length to take a turnaround and just get a shot up over the defender using the turnaround and he made a basket like that tonight and he's he's made a few of those recently and that's just a really nice patient drive to see from him for the night the Hawks were nine for 38 from three that's 23.7 percent obviously it's going to be hard to win an NBA game that way Justin Anderson made two of four threes Vince made three of seven but Vince's threes Vince's three threes were the only threes that the bench made uh, so, again, just, just some lineups out there that just didn't have enough shooting. And overall, even the Hawks' good shooters, for the most part, didn't have their greatest nights. Before the game, Kent Bazemore won the Jason Collier Memorial Trophy. The trophy is given out in honor of Jason Collier, the former Hawks center who passed away in 2005. It honors a player from the Hawks who's done the most in the community, and Kent Bazemore has done a lot. Locally, he made a $20,000 investment in STEM equipment for the Atlanta Public Schools. He recently unveiled a renovated community basketball court for the Thomasville Recreation Center. His Arms Foundation benefits kids from his hometown in North Carolina. He's given scholarships to students at Old Dominion University and Winston-Salem State University so that students could attend conferences after the game, I spoke to him about the award, and you can hear uh, the passion in his voice when it comes to this kind of work. Oh, well, actually, only came to sit here hanging out before the game, before filming. Um, 
They came in. Uh, Andrea, uh, David Lee, bunch of bunch of people came in. Um, they presented me with it right before the well before we went out. But um, you know, it was one of the most important awards to me. Uh, it's just you know anything that's not basketball related. So like I get an extra kick out of it. Uh, you know, like my two degrees in college. Uh, what are those in? I'm sorry. Uh, human services and criminal justice. Okay. Yeah, I always wanted to be a mentor growing up. So, uh, you know, my foundation, is, it's been a lot of work, a lot of uh, changes. Um, you know, you feel like you take off and then you have little setbacks here and there, but you have a you know, good team. And, uh, we stayed the course and uh, people are actually starting to follow. Um, you know, we get some regulars and which is great to get that, you know, that the consistent support. And, you know, we're just trying to grow it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a real passion of mine because, you know, I want to start an academy ultimately. And, uh, you know, some along the lines of uh, what LeBron done, but, you know, but, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, it's not going to be, you know, it's just your, your regular academy. Um, I'm working on kind of a curriculum, so to speak, um, that, you know, I kind of want to, uh, show my kids because I've seen you know so much coming from Kelford to uh, going to Old Dominion and you know traveling the world through the NBA and you know, not not being drafted to you know obtaining a you know a good level of success. So I uh, just want to kind of get kids you know the, the secret. Well, not really the secret. It's just kind of um, you know, light the path a little bit. You know, for them, the kids that get off to a slow starting line. Is that something you'd want to take to North Carolina? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know. Um, I think it'll be the first place that I start. You know, obviously, uh, there are a lot of you know, a lot of good stuff here in Atlanta. A lot of people you can you know uh, you can pick their brains and kind of see there what they've done. The Ron Clark Academy, uh, the Drew Charter School that's out there in uh, East Atlanta. Um, you know, they do great. You know, they do great things for kids, and um, it's good to you know go down there, and hang out with them, and see how well spoken they are. And you know, it's just you know. You know, it takes a village to raise a child. I always believe that. My parents used to say that. So uh, you get the right people around a kid, you know, you can kind of change their life. Salute to Mr. Bazemore. He's good people. It's not hard to see that. And blessings to him and his wife as they eagerly await their first child. I think that's it for today. I'll close in a minute with some audio from Terry Stotts. But uh, as usual... Please, please, we mean this from the bottom of our hearts. Subscribe. That's a good first step. Rate. An even better second step. Review. Pretty good third step. We'd love to have you subscribe, rate, and review. We're looking for that kind of feedback. Uh, interested to hear from you. Uh, we'll catch up with you soon. The Hawks, don't forget, they have an early start Sunday. Rise and shine, 12.30 tip. will be interesting to see if Giannis plays in that one. Uh, I think he's had some nagging ankle and knee issues. Uh, as, as Coach Bud comes back to Atlanta, does he want to play Giannis uh, on a 1230 tip? It'll be interesting to see. Uh, but a nice early start time for that one, so be ready. I'm going to close here with some uh, audio from Portland coach Terry Stotts looking back on his time in Atlanta. Uh, a couple of funny moments at the end, and you know, anytime I can get audio that involves Rashid Wallace. You know that's coming up here. Any special recollections of your tenure here in Atlanta? Uh, my interviews with uh, Steve Holman were special. <laughs> <laughs> in what we'd, way? Well, we'd have to, we'd record interviews like three days ahead of time. So he'd say, okay, now this is going to air on Tuesday morning. So we haven't played this game yet. So you got to act like, you know, going into this game without playing that game. <laughs> Steve wanted to be able to punch that car so he could. That's right. <laughs> uh, broadcasting experience. Yeah. <laughs> Not for a while, I'm sure. No, no. 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 Uh, honestly, uh, the, my, my, my favorite memories of here were, you know, after we made all the trades and... Um, <laughs> 
So we made all the trades, and Rasheed Wallace is up in Detroit playing, and we got guys behind the bench not playing, and we lost by 40 at, at literally 40 at, at Miami. I thought, well, this is how my coaching career is going to end, is <laughs> these last 26 games or whatever. Is, uh, but the next game, we, we took Houston to triple overtime, and at least we saw a light at the tunnel. And those last 26 games, uh, Bob Sur was playing great. We had some upsets. We played exciting basketball, and that was for a time when – uh, I think a lot of people thought the season was basically a waste. Uh, it ended up being pretty special, wasn't it? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Would you say Rasheed Walsh was the most consistent yes. ball he ever coached? I'm sorry? Was the was, most, wasn't he the most consistent Consistent. Ball? You could count on him every night. <laughs> <laughs> 20 and 10? 20 and 10 every night. Yeah. <laughs>